Okay, in this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to look at making a tyre in Autodesk Alias Automotive. Uh, it's a very sort of basic, relatively quick way of doing it. Um, but it, it looks looks alright, the end result's pretty good. Um, okay, so let's get started. When you open up Autodesk Alias, you get your four, four display windows, so you've got top, left, back, and then here you've got your perspective window. I tend to keep it in the perspective window. So if you just hit 8, we'll get it in perspective window. And then if you press Control, uh, sorry, Shift and Alt in here, you can put it in perspective views. So when you go to left, front, and top, it's in perspective view, so you don't get any, uh, sorry, it's an orthographic view, so you don't get any perspective on it unless you go out of the. Uh, the side from our top views. Okay. So first thing is first, we must make sure that the that the wheel or tire is physically feasible. So if we take an example here, um, if we take a 15 inch wheel and uh, it's eight inches wide, and uh, the tire on that is a 23560R15. So that's 255 mil wide um, on a 15 inch rail. Okay, so first things first, let's make sure that snap to grid is on. Now, what we'll do is we'll make a cylinder, make sure it's bang on the arrow. If you've got snap to grid, it'll snap to the center anyway if you hover around it. Go to information window. And on transform info on scale. Now 23560R15 tire works out at 663 millimeters round. So that's 300, uh, sorry, 663, 663 in the Z as well. And wide it well, it's 235 tire, so it's 235. Okay, so that's the actual outside size of the uh, tire. So if we now put a wheel in that, exactly the same process. Transform scale. Now 15 inches is around 381 mil. There, X there, exactly the same as before. And eight inches, which is the size of the rim. It's two eight three mil. So there we have it. Dimensions or measurements of the tail that we're going to make. If the wheel or rim says it's five, six, seven, eight inches wide, whatever, that's the inside width. So the actual rim is a little bit wider. So that's where the tire lip is, and the seven inches, but the rim is just a tiny bit wider here. Okay, so there we've got the dimensions. Ready set up. So we can just use that now as a size guide, size template to create, create a new layer. Name that uh, tire curves. So what we're doing now is creating curves to revolve around the centre, so we actually get the uh, the skin of the tire. Okay, so if we go to the outer edge here, where this line is. Just select go. <coughs> Choose an edit point curve. Okay, we've got uh, snap to grid on here, so if we just take that off. Edit point curve again, it's doing the same, exactly the same. Now, if you drag your right hand mouse button down, it only moves it vertically down. 
then I've got her in the top view here. So it's not physically down, it's it's more across the width. All we want to do is make sure the CV here for the curve is right on the dead center line here. So if you just snap to curve, move that CV just up, up to the dead center line. about there. We copy and paste that and just move it a little bit. So there perhaps. What we want to do is make a double skin on the actual tire, uh, on the outer edge of the tire, so that when you trim it away, you get the uh, you get tread. I'm not saying that this is the best way of making a tire, but it's what I do and it works every time for me. Okay, so what we've got here is what we need to do is we need to make a curve that's in curvature that goes to that one and then a second curve that goes to that one there. You want to make sure that these CVs, you do not move these CVs in this direction from left to right, only up and down. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to make half the tyre and then duplicate it across. And if these aren't perfectly flat here, you'll get a peak or a sharp edge on the, uh, on the surface of your tyre. So you need to make sure they're flat. Okay, so I use uh, this blend curve toolbox here, and you create the blend curve. Press Control and Alt, and slide it along the uh, the line. You can do the same here, and that's made a curve that's in curvature. You can do the same again for this curve. What we've got is two curves here that are in curvature with with all the lines, but um, it's slightly different. One goes to the top skin, or what will be the top skin, and one goes to the bottom skin. Now, what you want to make sure is that all of these curves here you move the pivot to up here. Absolute ABS means absolute, absolute zero. What's that done? Is it's moved the pivot point. To the center x and y at absolute zero, everything is absolute zero. Now that we've done that, we can get rid of measurements. Well, not get rid of, but make visible. So we've just got the curves here. And you'll see that these are all on the x, uh, the x y plane. So if we go to surfaces, revolve, double click on revolve. Now I usually make my uh, my tire in eight sections. So if you move the slider along to eight degrees, five span one, the one. Now you need to revolve it around the y-axis. In this case, so that it's it's using the y-axis as the pivot point. So you need y there. And then you can start revolving. So revolve. Nothing. Choose a line at one. I'd suggest doing the inner one first so you don't get confused, and the outer one, and then the actual side wall. 
Okay, so what we've got there is half of the tire. Like that. And you'll see from the inside that it's double skin so that when we trim away the uh, the tread we'll get a nice pattern there and it's in 8 sections because I tend to make them in 8 sections it just makes life easier and then what you can do now is select all of these surfaces new layer tire surfaces Some nose, and if you make the curves invisible, you just toggle the model so that it's nice and smooth. And you that one. Now, to make sure that you've not moved any of these, what you can do is just quickly put some tree on there. And you'll see that that's a nice flat smooth surface across there. If you've moved any of these out, you get a sharp pointy one in there. But this is what you want. And if we just take symmetry back off. Okay, so now we're at this point, this is the point where it starts to get fun really. Because uh, what we can do is start making the uh, the pattern for the tread on a tyre. Okay, so if you just uh, go back into the top view. What that's done is it's created a line on the XY plane, so it's got no height at all. So if you just move it up above the tyre, so that from the top view you can see what, see what we're doing. Okay, so if you move these CVs, it's pretty flexible. You can do uh, pretty much whatever you want here, to be honest. So what I did then was just duplicated the first curve and just rotated it around the, uh, the pivot point, which was the first CV, which was there. So what I've done there is just put a little line in so that it's closed. You need to make sure that if you want to trim anything, everything has to be closed. It's okay at this edge so long as it goes over. If it doesn't go over, it needs to be closed. <coughs> okay, so what I tend to do here is choose these curves. Move pivot before, as before, out to it zero. So the pivot point is there, even though the curve is up here. And what we want to do here is copy and paste and scale. It's very important you scale and not move. Scale. And then he uses the pivot point to scale there. So we need to do is make sure that it's below the surface. Get the skin, the inner skin on the tyre 
is this line here at the right end. So it needs to go below that. And so long as it's still sticking out, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so if you select these, uh, or if we make a new layer for shred curves, and assign these, and then we make the entire surface invisible for the moment. Your skin here to skin between all the points. So you say got something like that. Just making your way for tread surfaces. I'm just doing this to keep everything plain, simple, um, and easier to model. Okay, so there we've got a single tread piece there. And if we make the tire visible again, can, uh, can you get an idea of what that's what it's going to look like? Now, all of these surfaces that you've just made. The pivot point should be absolute zero. But I would always move the pivot point to zero anyway. Just in case you've accidentally moved something or whatever. And you can edit, duplicate, object. Now here, depends how many times you want to revolve or how many repetitions of the tread pattern that you've made around the tire because it's in eight sections I suggest doing it in multiples of eight so eight sixteen <coughs> twenty four whatever if you want to do twenty four it's fine you just type in twenty four there now the rotation you need it around the y axis here so you want that it's like the axle. So X, Y, Z, rotation, leave all of these all. Sorry. We want 23, we want 23 repetitions, because we've already got one there, so it will repeat it 23 times around to make 24. So here, we want 360 degrees. So that's 360 over 24. 15 degrees. So if you plug in 15 there, press go. That's kind of what it'll look like. Just gives you a better idea. You want to jazz it up a bit, put a couple more lines in, whatever. This is the point to do it at. If you do it before, you don't know what, what the gap difference is going to be here. So, what you can do is make tread curves visible again. Then, control and alt snaps to the curve here. So, if you make another curve, one there, and another one there, and you can just move the CVs to suit.
these curves here. Again, you need to move, make sure that the pivot is absolute zero. Make sure that these curves here are on tread curves. Okay, what this has done sometimes does this. So if we just uh, move the tire surface and the tread surface, what it's done is it snapped that CV to the bottom curve. Sometimes does that. It's just over this being funny. If you just grab it, move it to the where it doesn't really matter. The point still on zero. If we draw and paste, scale. It's not exactly on the line, but it doesn't really matter, it's personal. <coughs> if you skim between these ones. Move these surfaces into red surfaces. See, it's a bit more funky. You know what you want to do. Don't forget, keep making sure that these are absolute zero. Because if they're not, something will go wrong and it's a pain. Exactly the same before 15 degrees, 23. Go. Bring back in your tire surface. This makes it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more detailed. And that is how you make sure that the tread pattern is all neat and tidy and uniform. Okay, so from here, what we can do, if we go into the left section, zoom out a little bit. What we want to do is we want to have an eighth section of everything. So it might seem like we're going back on ourselves a little bit, but it just makes everything a whole lot easier in the long run. So if we just choose these surfaces, I'm going to choose this eighth of section here. So whatever you do, do not delete any surfaces that are touching or in contact with the skin. You can delete this surface here because it's just missing the radius. So if we delete that one, we will get away with that last time. And that one. All of the other surfaces here are touching or intersecting the outer skin, or well, both the skins of the tyre. So what we need to do here is we need to trim off the, the sections 
that are overhanging the eighth. So again, edit point curve, <coughs> make sure that the snapped grid is on. Create one curve, so we've got one curve there, and pivot point is at eight, absolute zero. Edit, duplicate object, we only want one of them, one duplication. Okay, so that's exactly at 45 degrees, which is one eighth of the entire tire section, so it shouldn't affect this at all. What we need to do is we need to go into set edit project curve on the surface. So what you want to do, select all of the curves that you'll be projecting onto those ones and those ones spacebar to confirm and select the two lines and spacebar again keep these lines as trim lines and what you need to do is trim Select surface and select the area. Discard. Same story for this end. Discard. Okay, so what we've got here is exactly one eight. Okay, now this bit is where it can start to get a little bit tricky. So what you want to do <coughs> is you want to select intersect here, which is that one where two surfaces intersect. And what you want to do is you want to select all of the outer and inner skin surfaces on the tire. Don't worry about the sidewall, it doesn't really matter. And press spacebar. And what you want to do is you want to select all of the surfaces that you will eventually trim. So you want that one. You see it's made a curve on the surface. You can do it in a certain order. Makes life easier because then you won't do any more than once. Okay, so now that's done, what it's done is created a load of curves on surfaces, which we can now then start to trim. So again, if we select trim here. to the side view. Discard all of this. And it's just left the uh, lines underneath. To keep it simple I would like to trim these ones as well. Keeps it looking neat and tidy. <coughs> so now we've got we've got the inner wall, the outer wall, and then all of these lines. In between. So what we want to do now is trim these two outer surfaces, so these two outer walls here. So if you select trim, select the outer edge here, okay, 
is now what we want to do is we want to select all of the areas that we want to get rid of. Like so. And we need to do the same for the outer part here. And the shoulder of the tire. What that's left us with is the in-cut pattern tread into the tyre. We've still got a few things that we need to trim, like these here. It's not a massive idea. <coughs> Again, we'll use the intercept. Maybe a bit of pain, but it's not too bad. Just got one more to do. Okay, and now we have a one eighth round of the tire, so it's actually a one sixteenth, it's one sixteenth of the tire there. A nice curvature. On the uh, cut tread. A one sixteenth second. What we want to do is select all surfaces here. Yeah. May as well apply them all to the tire surfaces now. Edit. Want to group. Okay, now they're all grouped, so it's just one click to select the lot. Again, make sure that pivots are absolute zero. I have no doubt that it is. But it's always best to make sure. <coughs> Edit, duplicate, object. Now, because we've got an eighth of the toe on eight parts, we've got one already, so we need it to be duplicated seven times around 45 degrees in the Y plane. And press go. Now we have half a tire. What we can do is press object, edit, duplicate object. And you want it duplicating once this time with a zero rotation. And here, because we want it effectively mirroring across, it'll be one minus one y. It's the best way of doing it.
you can mirror or uh, or turn on symmetry if you prefer, but it's the best way of doing it. There you go. About half the pattern then. Toggle grid and toggle model. You can see the tiny bit of colour. That's your tire tread. And that's how you make a tire, a basic, relatively basic tire.